Welcome to this training session on Kurzweil 1000. I am Callus, and I'm happy to work with you today. Uh, Kurzweil 1000 is our software that specializes for the blind uh, or visually impaired, and so the software is designed to work strictly off of keyboard shortcuts and uh, hotkeys. And then the file set menus that you see up at the top of the screen. To start Kurzweil, you can press Control alt on the keyboard once you've installed it and uh, I already went ahead and opened it just to make it quick and so a couple of nice things about Kurzweil is once I've opened the software I have basically two functions on my keyboard for typing using hotkeys I'm going to use this portion of the keyboard and I'm going to use this enter key all right keeps refocusing there for my shortcuts the number pad becomes strictly um, shortcuts. It no longer enters functions as your normal number pad. The enter button becomes help. Zero is start and stop reading. There are uh, some, some there are some online instructions that pop up right when I first open the software that will guide me to understand the keypad and then also a quick reference um, menu that will allow me to go through some topics when I first start as well. So it helps me get started. For our demonstration today, I'm going to pop over to a couple of the documents we have as well that are available, the quick reference guide. And so just shoot down here, you can see it's got a nice menu and it'll take me through all of the functions on Kurzweil 1000. We're next going to look at using the keypad to access Kurzweil 1000, and this is strictly the shortcut buttons on the keypad. It tells me the different functions, and then it gives me a descriptor of each line of the keypad and what each button means. So it's um, not real long, um, it's easy to listen to and go through. And then lastly, uh, we have this document which we created just as a, a quick overview. So the keypad actually has two uh, levels of function. It has a main function and a shift function. And then it has three different keypad formats. And I'll show you how to switch between those in just a moment. So with the keypad, it defaults to the reading keypad because that's the one I'm going to use the most. And so I can change the volume, I can change the reading speed, I can jump forward and backwards a unit, uh, I start and stop reading, I can um, change the reading mode, so you know, start uh, continuous uh, or self-paced, and um, I can jump to pages, things like that. Under the file management shortcuts, uh, this is where I'd open and close files, uh, save them, different things like that, like I would normally do under the file menu of my uh, drop-down menu. And then the settings keypad allows me to adjust what I'm hearing and uh, the language I'm hearing it in, the voice, and things like that, as well as um, the instructional voice, the reading voice, and different things like that. So they're really helpful to know through each of these. And you'll become quickly very familiar with the Kurzweil shortcuts. The other thing that works really simply with Kurzweil, Kurzweil 1000 is the main keyboard here. It uses pretty much the same shortcuts as Microsoft Office. So anyone that has uh, been using a computer for quite a while that is blind or visually impaired is going to be familiar with these. I have talked to a number of people when I'm first introducing this concept to them and they're like, you really expect them to learn all those shortcuts? If they're already using a computer, they already know them. Um, and if they don't, they will learn them very quickly. I myself find the best way for me to practice is close my eyes and force myself to uh, do it from memory. And uh, you very quickly start to learn the shortcuts. So let's go ahead and open a document. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts to do that. So I'm just going to do Alt. F. File. New. Control plus N. So it told me I was in file, and then I was under new. I don't want to start a new document, so I'm going to down arrow. Open. Control plus O opens a dialog. And it tells me what it is. 
plus uh, the shortcut key, the hot key, and then it's going to open a dialog box. So I know I'm going to have a pop-up. So I'm going to press enter. Select one or more files to open. File list. Five big predictions for artificial intelligence in 2017.docx. Okay. And so it dropped me right into the general folder. That's the default. And then it started reading to me what was in there. I only have one document, so it's pretty easy. Um, I need to go select. Enter the name of a file. Sort by name. Okay. Cancel. The selected folder is file list. Five big predictions for artificial in bottom of list. Five big predictions for artificial intelligence in 2017.docx. I just did the down arrow to select it, and then I'm going to hit enter. Converting file five big predictions for artificial intelligence in 20... Page one, January 4, 2017. Last year was huge for... Okay, so I'd already started reading this, so it picked up where I left off. And you noticed as soon as I opened the document, it starts reading it right away. And so I pressed the F5 button to pause it. When I want to restart, I press F5 again. And then um, I have other functions, jump forward, rewind, uh, things like that with the other function keys. Or down here on the menu. Punctuation marks should be spoken. Machine learning. But 2017 may well deliver even more. Here are five key things. Okay, and so it paused. Um, it does highlight the word that is, uh, when I pause, it highlights the word it's on. I can change the setting to highlight um, as it's reading as well. For my individuals who are visually impaired, but not completely blind, who do benefit from seeing the text, I can go ahead and make adjustments and make the text really large, have a highlight as it's reading, different things like that, change the contrast. As you can see, it's a pretty simple layout of focusing on the contrast. Let's go ahead and look at some of the menu options. I'm just going to hit Alt and you can see it popped up the underscore on the letter on each folder. So if I want to do edit, I know I press the E. If I want to open the folder, I press the L. If I want to go to settings, I press settings, settings. voices, opens a dialog. And you can see I can change a lot of the settings. That's one of the really nice things about Kurzweil 1000 is it's extremely customizable. And so I have a lot of voices. I can customize the way I scan. When I recognize something, Kurzweil 1000 focuses on accuracy. A lot of times an individual, uh, unless they're being supported, they're not going to be able to proofread the material that they scan. And so Kurzweil 1000 focuses as a default on accuracy over speed and I can set thresholds of how accurate I want the software to feel that it's being uh, before it will save a page. If it doesn't hit that threshold, it will re-recognize it automatically. And then let's just go ahead and look at some of these settings. So I'm going to press enter and just review or change voice. reading voice settings. So you can see um, I've got reading voice. Message voice. Message voice. Reading voice. Message voice. Uh, so the message voice is the instruction one we're hearing. And then the reading voice is the one that it reads the document. And I can go ahead. I'm going to hit tab. The selected speech engine is voiceware. Um, the selected voice is VW Kate. I can change the voice. VW Paul. VW James. VW Kate. Now, if I want to use a different voice engine so I get a different selection, I'm going to press shift and tab. The selected speech out. engine is voiceware. ED Eloquence. Microsoft voiceware. Okay, so I have three different voice engines that you can go through. Um, some of the older voices are a little more tinny, a little more computer sounding, but they can actually read faster than some of the newer voices because they aren't designed to show the spaces and the pauses and stuff as well as the newer voices. And so individuals that read at re or listen at really high speeds might actually prefer some of the Microsoft voices. Um, over the voiceware voices, though the voiceware sound more human and natural. So it's a good idea to go through them and see what you like. The selected voice is VW Kate. Pitch 11. Okay, I can adjust the pitch. So as I'm listening to it, I can raise and make it a higher pitch voice or a lower pitched voice. I can adjust the speed, the volume, the emphasis. The method. speed is 100. The volume, the selected audio devices, speakers, real tech, R, audio. Um, is defaulted here. Uh, the emphasis will actually, if I have bold print 
or if i have italics it will adjust the voice a little bit so i hear that red with an emphasis okay so i'm just going to go ahead Test. and hit tab a couple okay. more okay cancel apply and hit apply since i did make all changes have been applied voices and i'm going to right arrow scanning and so as you can see here the mode is scan and recognize so it scans my document and processes it at the same time I can have it just scan it and do it as a batch and then recognize it as a batch later. Automatic page orientation is really helpful for individuals uh, who are scanning their own documents because it will look at it and say which side of this is up and automatically adjust it so the voice recog or the optical character recognition software will work better. If I'm assisting someone and I know the page orientation automatically I can adjust that because it will speed it up slightly if the software doesn't need to think about it. I mentioned the thresholding and so the thresholding is really helpful for different things. Um, accuracy, color of page, uh, different types of print, uh, small fonts versus uh, or small point versus a large point. And a good example is you can see the brightness here is set to 50 and the, the thresholding is dynamic, which means it automatically sets itself on each scan. If I'm using an old paperback book, one of those really cheap ones uh, that I bought at Bookman's or something that, that's been around for a while and had kind of cheap paper and it's turning brown a little bit, you know, maybe one page is wider than the other. If I set a specific threshold, it's going to judge the color of the text versus the color of the page based on what I set. And if I have a darker page and a lighter page, it's not going to recognize it as accurately on, on every page. But if I let it be dynamic and say, okay, what's the background? How dark is it? Now, what is the color of the, the print? How dark is that? Uh, maybe my print wasn't real dark. It will give me a more accurate uh, scan. So I can leave that on dynamic or I can go ahead and adjust it. I have my scanner source. So if I have a, a built-in scanner uh, hooked into uh, my Kurzweil, I can automatically scan or I can uh, use an outside scanner. If I have a document feeder, duplex scanning means I am be read right and left page like a book. Does it really interesting? I scan pages one, three, five, seven, and nine. And then I turn the book around, scan pages 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. The software will automatically recognize it, flip everything around, put it in order for me, um, and things like that. So, a lot of really, really helpful items and settings. The mode is scan and recognize. Scanning. Recognition. Recognition here, uh, the same type of thing. Identify columns. So, if I'm doing a book that has uh, multiple columns on it, if I'm doing two pages, so if I'm doing books versus individual pages, speckle removal is kind of helpful. If I have something that got scanned and it's got little spots on it, it will take those spots out so it doesn't try and recognize them as um, words. So different things like that, um, I can go through and I can set if I want it to recognize the tables a little bit better, uh, if I want it to scan a blank page and keep that in my document as a blank page or if I want to skip it. Reading. Reading is our basic one we already looked at. Um, so it gives me uh, punctuation level. Does it read every punctuation, every comma, every period? Does it read some of it? I can have it read none. Uh, does it read numbers as 1, 2, 3 or 123? Uh, table reading, so does it read it as a table left to right, um, different things like that. Browse method, I can have it browse through a document more quickly if I'm not sure where I need to go. So it'll read the first sentence of each paragraph or the first phrase depending on what I set it to. Okay, let's look at general. general. So general, uh, does it want me to keep page numbers? Uh, when I scan it, do I say this is actually page number 47? Because uh, I'm starting at chapter 2, and so it will automatically do that. And then fix hyphens, do I want it to drop hyphens out and, and connect the words, different things 
Display. Display. Here is where if I have a visually impaired person, I'm going to go ahead and customize it for them. I can change the background versus the highlight of the text. I can change the size, the magnification. Uh, I set the magnification to three one time and it got quite large um, just on a three. So it really is highly, highly customizable. Margins. If I want to type. Configuration. Um, so here are some of the uh, defaults that are automatically set for you uh, as far as the hotkeys and things like that. And then velocity. velocity. If, as one becomes more and more familiar with curves, while they're not going to want to hear everything. And so they can adjust the verbosity down from high, medium, low, basically. And so it will, rather, if I do Alt F, maybe it won't tell me file because I know I did Alt F. But as I go down, it will tell me what the submenu is. Things like that. So I can adjust it to make it however I want it. Also, uh, once I hit apply, now I'm doing this with the keyboard. I'm cheating. I apologize. All changes have been applied. Uh, so I should do shift tab. Cancel. Okay. Okay. Under settings. Uh, File. Has a sub settings. Voices. I can Opens it. Here. Reading. Verbosity. Save settings. Save settings. So Opens a dialog. Customize this to a particular um, individual. Say I have a, a public computer at the school that maybe three or four individuals are using. I can save my settings. Please select or enter a name for the settings file. Default. To my Caps name. S. Okay. The settings have been saved in Callus. And then when I log in the next time, I just go Alt T. Settings. Voices. And Opens a dialog. L. Select a settings file to load, Callus. And the settings have been loaded from Callus. Now I have my personal settings. So that's another really nice feature about the Kurzweil 1000 is I can have it on a computer, say in my library or my, my computer lab, and more than one individual can use it, but they can still customize it to themselves. If I have my own private copy, of course, I'll you know just have it customized to myself. So those are the major functions in Kurzweil um, as far as the shortcuts, um, the keyboard here, or the, I'm sorry, the number pad here, and then your standard keyboard shortcuts. Let's flip back over to this other document. I'm going to scroll down. Now Kurzweil, of course, does use, as I mentioned, a lot of the standard Microsoft uh, shortcuts, Alt F for open, Control C for copy, um, Control V for paste, things like that. However, because it has additional functions like scan and recognize and uh, replacing a page and things that Microsoft Word isn't going to worry about, I have additional shortcut keys, uh, a lot more of them actually. And so if an individual prefer shortcuts, they are faster than going through the menus. Over time, uh, as they read through the menus, it will read to them and tell them what these hotkeys are, and then they can just use these shortcuts and hotkeys directly. Um, if, if someone maybe doesn't use the software as regularly, or uh, you know they just prefer the, to go through the file, that, that works just as well, and they just hit the menu, you know, file or open or settings, and go that way. And so we have um, a lot of settings here that the individual can use, and um, both on the regular keyboard and on the number pad. So I'm just going to cheat again. And Kurzweil 1000. Okay. And uh, let's look at the tools menu now. Settings, voices. Navigation. Go to page. Settings. Tools. Apply corrections. Okay. So the tools I'm going to use somewhat uh, both to read as well as to write. Uh, Kurzweil 1000 does not have as many writing support functions as Kurzweil 3000 because it focuses on being a really, really good document reader. I can, however, open a new document create a, a new blank document and I can type. As you noticed when I typed my name, it said the S, it said the last letter. It defaults to read each letter as I'm typing. I can adjust that to read word or sentence because 
I type fairly quickly. It only read the last letter because I got through the others too fast. Um, and so it just skipped to the next one. And then you can see I have other things like uh, spell check, corrections. Uh, I can change the pronunciations of words if uh, they're not accurate or so maybe it's a, a weird foreign word or an abbreviation or something I'm using. And then you can see also um, as I scroll down. Check here, edits, recognized, select corrections file. Define a word, control plus D opens a dialogue. Okay, so I have a dictionary, I have a thesaurus. Use the thesaurus, shift plus F7. Recognition statistics, last page. Okay. Opens a dialogue. So if I'm reading through something, you know, the page just doesn't seem to be making a whole lot of sense. I can look and see uh, what the recognition stats were. And I'm like, oh, this page is bad. I know I need to rescan it. So there's all recognition some great statistics. I can do Has a sub here. online search for books. Opens a dialogue. Okay, so these are some additional features I can get through Kurzweil. If I want to use uh, Bookshare or something like that. Uh, Gutenberg Library. I can look for books on the internet. Uh, I've got use the encyclopedia translation functions. Window. Next document. Control plus F6. Okay, so right now I just have one document open, so it only has one on my list. But if I had multiple documents, I could go through here and I can jump um, from document to document. Help. Register. Opens a dialog. Okay, so over here you can see I've got my manuals, I've got my quick reference, I showed you those two items at the beginning. Okay, setting status, I can adjust that. And um, quick reference, I mentioned that um, already. File, new, control plus n. So I'm just looking to see if there's anything here real quick um, that I think might be super helpful for you guys. The launch menu. Um, Open. Save, add, find, summarize, launch, add, opens a dialog. Okay, so here I have some additional items. I can add a photocopier, I've got my calendar, and I've got my uh, speaking calculator. Launch, utilities, copy, opens a dialog. Okay, so here also under utilities I can continue to customize. Remove image from page. I have the option in Kurzweil of scanning and keeping the image. So I can see the original layout of the document, which might be particularly helpful in a textbook or something for a visually impaired uh, individual who still wants to reference the original layout. Um, but I can remove that if I don't want to see it and I just want it super strict. It'll speed it up a little bit for me if I'm not having to look at the images. Um, so a lot of really helpful things. Utilities. Copy. Copy. Launch. Has a sub edit. Undo. Control plus Z. Okay, so my standard things here, I do have the ability to create a note and create a voice note. And so if I want to throw in a note here, um, I'm writing a paper or something like that, I can just click on create a note, type out my note, it will record it. And then when I hit the uh, go back to read my notes later, it just goes through each note. Um, or it will read them also. As I'm Folder, new. Opens a dial scan. Start new scan. F9. These are the same things we saw on the uh, number pad over here. Uh, similar scan options. Read. Start reading. F5. Okay, so now you can see here in addition to reading, I've got jump forward is uh, F7. Uh, I'm sorry, F8. I can reread the current unit if I need to hear it in. I just press F7. If I need to go back and read here the previous unit, F6. It'll actually spell words for me, um, so if I'm not sure how to spell a word that I'm hearing, it'll spell it so I can learn it. And so a lot of different notes, so you can see here I have my read my note, uh, I read my current note again. Now let's look at navigation. navigation. Go to page, control plus G opens a dialog. And this just allows me to jump around a little bit quicker. Uh, Nothing really different here. So go to phrase. I could type a phrase I'm looking for if I know a particular, maybe I'm looking for a quote or something like that. But go to page, go to bookmark. Uh, you're, you're pretty standard items. Online. Search for books. Opens a dialog. So the other thing I did not mention here in online is the updates. So look through the book search translation updates. An error occurred during the search in Kurzweil Educational Systems, Incorporated unable to create FTP session. 
I just got a brand new computer and I haven't registered this version of Curse while yet <laughs> because I just used it for the first time today. So that's why it's giving me the error. However, if I have had Kurzweil for a while, I do want to check for updates. We don't regularly make significant updates to Kurzweil 1000 because it is already very robust and uh, very smooth operating. However, from time to time we will uh, do updates, maybe add a feature or especially do a security patch or a bug fix. Uh, as soft technology changes, sometimes we need to update the software so it stays functioning well with the newer operating systems and such forth. And so it is a good idea to always come in uh, once a month. We do updates, but uh, if at least every two or three months you want to come in here and check for an update. If there is one available in the second window where it says items available for download. No, no items, items were found. found it will tell me that oh Kurzweil version 14 point whatever it is or um, whatever you happen to be on the time we're currently on 14 it will tell me that's available and then I would select that okay and I would click OK cancel and it would accept it and update I'm just gonna hit cancel because I just installed it about 20 minutes ago so I don't have any updates um, software uh, can seem a little bit daunting when I first look at it, especially if you're not familiar with this style of format, uh, running off of all the shortcuts and, and hotkeys. Just dive into it. Use the printouts um, if, you're, if you're visual and you're learning how to use it for the first time. Uh, use those as, you, as your shortcuts. And, and as I said, the way I practice is I just close my eyes and I force myself to remember uh, what the shortcuts were. And it doesn't take very long to become familiar with the software. And it again, is, uh, if I have a visually impaired or a blind individual that's using it, they're going to pick it up much, much quicker because they're already familiar with a lot of the shortcuts and a lot of the hotkeys. And so they will have less of those to learn than those um, that aren't familiar and don't generally tend to use a computer that way. So we're happy to to help you out if you have questions on using the software. Um, be happy to uh, reach out to us and we'll, we'll support you with that. If you have technical questions such as troubles with installing the software or you've been using it for a while and all of a sudden a feature stops working, um, usually that means you need to update your computer your version um, but anything like that you do have access to technical support that is both the administrators as well as the end users of the software and so we're happy to work with you and make sure that you have a successful experience in using this and we wish you a great day take care bye bye